Puffy has been making money off of Biggie's name for longer than Biggie was alive. People keep forgetting he hadn't turned 25 yet. He was still 24 when he died. It's been over 25 years. Clearly, a Biggie Smalls verse is very valuable. So then what the f happened to the commission? What happened to that album? It was recorded. It was being mixed and mastered upon Biggie's death. It was supposed to have came out that summer after Biggie's album because Biggie's album was slated. He died a week and a half before his album came out. Then the commission was supposed to come out and that was supposed to be his exit from Bad Boy and then starting his own company. Puffy has been making money on that boy's name longer than he lived. It supported all of Bad Boy. That's real, yo. The more money you make, the more problems you get. Close to 26 years ago, Biggie, also known as the Notorious B.I.G., was murdered. Biggie died on the night of March 9, 1997, and to this date, no one has ever been convicted of his murder. However, new bizarre details linking Diddy to the rapper's death have been revealed. So what actually happened to Biggie? Everyone knows the tragic tale about the Biggie's unsolved murder, but somehow the accounts of events leading up to it have always been blurry. Well, not anymore. A former bodyguard of the Bad Boy record label has revealed that Diddy was making money off of Biggie and that Biggie was planning on leaving the record label weeks before he was murdered. While appearing on DJ Vlad's vlog, Gene Deal claimed that the late rapper made moves to leave Bad Boy for a lucrative deal worth more than $60 million. Deal said he saw Biggie's Bad Boy contract when he had to watch over Diddy's briefcase during a flight. It outlined Biggie's earnings in increments of $250,000, but left publishing income in Puff's possession. When he asked Biggie about it, the rapper allegedly told him about a new deal and all the money he'd make. Uh, Puff gave me his, his briefcase and everything like that, like, yo, here, like, me carry this Say, all right, I got five hours, six hours on this thing. Let me see what's in the briefcase. And I seen big contract. And it was talking about, well, you get 250000 you know, uh, for signing. You're going to get another 250000 The thing go gold. Then you're going to get this much and you're going to get that much. And then at the end of the contract, I was skimming through it. At the end of the contract said, oh, we're going to discuss about you getting your publishing and your marketing back. Right. So I was asking Biggs questions about that because I not I didn't know what publishing was. I didn't know what marketing was. Although Gene's claims may be hard to verify, they are heavily backed by Biggie's mother, Valletta Wallace, who once discussed how much money he received when he signed on with the label. She wrote about it in her 2005 book, Biggie, Valletta Wallace Remembers Her Son, Christopher saying, the truth is, Christopher accepted the illusion of a friend and mentor for about 25000 That's the amount Puffy lured my son with. That was a lot of money for Christopher back then as a 19-year-old. He had never seen that much at one time in his life. It was enough money to make my son believe that Puffy was ready to do anything for him. It was enough to buy a blind love and loyalty. In his interview with DJ Vlad, Gene also talked about Diddy prioritizing making money over anything else. He claimed that Diddy stated he didn't care if Tupac and Biggie died, keeping in mind that that was months before their deaths. Deal talked about the situation that occurred after the Soul Train Awards, where Diddy became upset after he overheard him telling the other bodyguards that he ran from death row. He revealed that Diddy said his priority was being a businessman and making money. After those remarks, he claimed Diddy foreshadowed a chain of events as he said he didn't care if Biggie or if Tupac died or if Suge Knight got locked up. You said that uh, you heard Puffy say something. You said, I don't care if Pac got to die, I don't care if Big got to die, something has to change. Right. When did he say that? Right after the Soul Train thing. He said, yo, Gene, I got 126 employees and these people depend on me for their livelihoods. If these white folks thought or they would think that I had anything to do with any kind of gunplay, they wasn't going to with me and they not going to with me. He said, um, I'm a businessman. I'm about making money, but something got to change. I don't give a if Pac got to die, Big got to die or Suge Knight go to jail. 
something's got to change. In the same interview, Gene later revealed that Biggie Shooter had approached Diddy before the murder went down. He also talked about the now famous sketch of Biggie's alleged killer and said it wasn't accurate. According to him, the police had surveillance photos of the man who fit the description given by eyewitnesses the night of the shooting, but had never released them. Little C's at the hospital, he said a Muslim shot Big. And I said to Paul, with the blue suit, white shirt, blue bow tie, he said, Gene, how you know? I said, that motherfucker walked up the puff car first. There's a picture that the LAPD, when they came to, sh to, to, to interview me with my lawyer, Eloise Nurse there, and they made a mistake and showed me that picture. And then they had a bunch of pictures on the wall. I said, what are these pictures here? And I grabbed the picture. And the picture was the Muslim guy, me, and Puff in there. So it came from some kind of camera from the Peterson Museum, but they had the face of the Muslim guy messed up. And then they're giving me this shit. They gonna uh, have the computer regenerate some kind of uh, photo and stuff like that and show it to me at a later time. In two weeks, or have fly me out to LA. I never heard back from them ever. Diddy has also spoken about Biggie's death during an interview with Wendy Williams, where he said that he felt some sort of responsibility for the passing of his then 24-year-old friend. In the same interview, he also recounted the details of that night and how the two should have been on a plane going out of the country. The fateful night Biggie was killed. Mm -hmm. At the height of his career. Yes. Do you ever feel responsible in any way, mm -hmm. in any way? I think I always feel some sort of, you know, responsibility because he was supposed to go to London that night. And, you know, I let him talk me into, you know, not going to London and staying in LA. Diddy's claims of Biggie being the one who wanted to remain in Los Angeles were refuted by Bad Boy's record former president, Kirk Burroughs, who instead said that Diddy was the one who asked them to remain in LA instead of going to London. You have a budget for everything that you do. The budget for Big in LA for the awards show ended that Friday night, Saturday morning, when a new budget started to get him from LA to London, where he would be taken care of with security, his friends, and everyone that he wanted to be with him in the style that he was accustomed to, to handle the press junket. When that didn't happen, that budget was never opened. The budget for LA ended and there was a great need for security that Saturday night and he was out without that security. The beef up. And we lost him. Gene's claims about Diddy's involvement in Biggie's death have been an eye-opener for many people. In fact, fans have pointed out how Gene's record of events that led to Biggie's death has always been the same. Stories never changed after all these years. This man is telling the truth, one fan wrote. I'm glad Gene exposing these truths big and puff wasn't as tight as puff made them out to be. Their relationship was CEO and artist, that's it, a second fan added. While a third one wrote, I'm so glad he said this. I've been saying it for years and Biggie fans didn't want to hear it. That man was leaving Bad Boy and did not rock with Diddy in his last days. That's why Puff forced him to LA and got him hit up. He knew his cash cow was leaving. The rap game would look a lot different if Pac and Biggie didn't die in 96 and 97. The theories concerning Biggie's untimely death, though not verified, have always had one thing in common, Diddy's involvement. Another theory which has resurfaced suggests that Biggie was killed by mistake and that Diddy was the intended target. Leaked FBI documents reveal Diddy had received multiple death threats and a security guard confronted a man who had approached Diddy's car just moments before the shooting. Both rappers have been waiting for cars to pick them up outside the Peterson Automotive Museum in LA after an after party. The pair both got into the front passenger seat of their respective green SUVs. Diddy's security guard told his driver to run a red light rather than stop at a junction, knowing they wouldn't have been safe to sit at the lights. Biggie's driver, however, didn't fall suit, and they sat at the lights for around a minute. What followed was a dark Chevy Impala pulling up alongside the rapper in his green GMC Suburban and opened fire on the vehicle. 
Despite being rushed to nearby Cedar sinai Medical Center for emergency surgery, Notorious B.I.G. succumbed to his catastrophic injuries and was pronounced dead at 1.15 a.m. Although Biggie is gone and buried, his legacy and his music live on in fans across the world. He will forever be remembered by his beloved fans as one of the best rappers of his time, and his music is still popular today. That's it for today's video, folks. Bye.